During the Republic of China period, Daofeng Town, located in the mountainous area at the junction of two counties, dragged an ordinary farmer from a mountain village into a dispute due to a piece of land. When the peasant man in the Muna mountain village met a radical urban female student, Chen Li Song, who had originally wanted to marry a young wife and live a peaceful life, was pushed to the forefront of resistance by fate. Keywords of the Novel No pop.up window in Daofeng Town, download the complete collection of Daofeng Town TXT, and read the latest chapters in Daofeng Town. Chapter 1 Wedding of Chen Family Ancestral Temple You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 1 Wedding of Chen Family Ancestral Temple On the fifteenth day of the first month in the year of Xinxi, the town of Daofeng was bustling with activity. The entrance of Chen Family Ancestral Temple in Qinzhuang is even more lively. The bride gets off the sedan chair. With a loud shout from the companion maid, the firecrackers outside the sedan rang out, and Lin Jinju descended from the sedan one by one. Looking around from the hem of the red cap, she felt a group of children rushing out from around, throwing small items such as dried longan kernels, persimmon kernels, peanuts, and others at her along with some other little wives who were watching the excitement. Lin Jinju is not afraid of longan kernels, persimmon kernels, and peanuts, because throwing them on her body does not hurt. Anyway, the bride who gets married in Daofeng town will have to go through this experience, and she is afraid of throwing small stones. In the wedding ceremony in Daofeng town, those who throw grains, nuts, and peanuts at the bride's head have the intention of praying for blessings and warding off evil spirits. However, some people take the opportunity to tease the bride and secretly throw small stones at her, causing her to break her head and bleed. In rural areas, this kind of thing often happens. Lin Jinju stared through the hazy red cap at the shoes held by her parents walking ahead. The person wearing those shoes is called Chen Li Song, and he will be her husband from now on. Chen Li Song is currently wearing a long gown that is only worn for marriage, with agile steps. He is leading Lin Jinju towards the ancestral temple of the Chen family and is about to pay her respects and get married. Two mischievous children suddenly became strange. They raised their cunning eyes, tilted their heads, and threw a few small objects at the bride's head. Chen Li Song saw that the small objects were thrown very quickly, and it seemed that they were not like longan seeds, persimmon seeds, or peanuts. Moreover, when he saw the two mischievous children throwing small objects, he was secretly laughing with his fists on his chin, knowing that it was definitely not a good thing. Seeing those small objects about to be thrown onto the bride's head, Chen Li Song immediately reached out to pick them up by mistake. Only a few crisp impacts were heard, and the small objects thrown were all grabbed by Chen Li Song one by one. Sure enough, it's a few small stones. If you throw it on Lin Jinju's head, it will definitely be a red envelope. These two mischievous ghosts. Brother Li Song will give it back to you now. Chen Li Song pretended to raise his hand and throw the small stone back at the two children, causing them to run away in a panic. Under the red veil, Lin Jinju heard the sound and words, and knew that Chen Li Song, who was about to become her husband, was so fond of her. She naturally followed Chen Li Song into the ancestral temple of the Chen family. As soon as she entered the ancestral temple of the Chen family, she heard Chen Li Song shouting to the hall, Dad, come here for a moment. Lin Jinju didn't know what had happened, and the ancestral temple of the Chen family suddenly seemed to quiet down. No one started hosting the wedding ceremony, no one spoke to the bride, and no one told Lin Jinju whether to continue standing or find a place to sit down. Because she hasn't been married yet, she can't speak, and Lin Jinju doesn't dare to ask. She stood there dumbfounded until her companion came to help her. But she could feel that the man who had just protected her was not in the ancestral temple now. Two months ago, in November of the year of Gengchen, the matchmaker of Qinzhuang came to the house to propose a marriage. She said that Chen Rui of Qinzhuang had a pair of children, with his brother named Chen Li Song and his sister named Chen Songmei. It would be a perfect match for her two siblings. Chen Li Song passed by the Lin family village when he went hunting in Fengshan. She had seen it before she got married, 
and even if the matchmaker did not say that their family would marry his sister to their brother Lin Jinshan, she was willing to marry her. Therefore, the soles of the shoes he is wearing now are a solid foundation for her. She believed that Chen Li Song had a more important point, which was his diligence. At the beginning of the year before last, a group of people appeared on Fengshan, similar to those on Daoxia. The town mayor was afraid that the Chen family's father and son would be banditized by the people on Fengshan, so he gave them a piece of land by the Tianjiang River. What is that piece of land? Every year, there are several or even a dozen typhoons in Daofeng town. As soon as the typhoon strikes, the water in Tianjiang rises and naturally floods that area. The field that is flooded all year round will not yield a good harvest, so no one wants that piece of land for over a hundred years. I didn't expect that last year the Chen family came to talk about marriage, and after they decided to change sister dot in dot law, they even sent a whole bag of millet in addition. Originally, the father and son of the Chen family were not in a hurry to plant the land after obtaining it. Instead, they dug up mud from the Tianjiang River and collected soil and stones from the Fengshan side to fill in the land and thicken the field ridges. Diligence brings rewards. Last year, more than a dozen typhoons did not affect the harvest of that land, and because it is near the river, irrigation is more convenient. Did he suddenly feel that I was not good and decide not to let me go? It's been a long time since my grandmother's family spoke up, and now Lin Jinju is about to cry. Apart from helplessness, she only has wild thoughts. Just as she was daydreaming, Chen Li Song, who was picking up the small stone for her, whispered, Dad, be careful not to use the Wanyin ship. When I just came back from picking her up and passed by the police force, I saw them sneaking around. The more I thought about them, the more I felt something was wrong. That's why I told you. Well, I hope I wasn't busy earlier. Let's start paying respects now. Okay, Dad. Upon hearing the conversation between Chen Li Song and his son, Lin Jinju almost burst out laughing and thought to herself, it turns out he didn't want me. He should have done something important just now. Chen Rui heard Chen Rui ask again, where's your Tianfu brother? Our Qinzhuang children are having a wedding, and if he's not here, it won't be possible. Where's Li Taizhu? Master, I'm behind you. Li Taizhu responded, running from behind Chen Rui to the father and son of the Qin family. Taizhu, hurry up and invite Tianfu master over. Remember, you should call him, master, and etiquette should not be lost. Don't worry, master. Li Taizhu responded cheerfully and quickly left the ancestral temple to invite someone. Chen Rui turned around and asked companion Fang Mama, companion Fang Mama, are we ready to start paying respects? The good time has already passed half an hour, let's start as soon as everyone arrives, said the companion's mother hurriedly, everyone will be here soon. Chen Rui's wife took the conversation and asked, is it unlucky to pay respects at a later time? After all, it's not good, but I think our boss should have an urgent matter just now, so there's nothing we can do about it. So everyone moved the tables and chairs, rearranged the offerings, and waited for Li Taizhu to call Chen Tianfu to start. Nearly half an hour later, Chen Tianfu arrived late. Chen Tianfu is a man in his forties, holding a civilized stick in his hand. When he enters the ancestral temple, he commands, Chen Rui, let's start. Incense. My father dot in dot law and mother dot in dot law take their seats. Chen Ru agreed that Chen Tianfu had already arrived, nodded to him, and immediately turned to his companion, saying, The elders have all come, let's start. Then he pulled his wife and lit some incense at the incense table. After bowing four times, he sat down. Their family is just an ordinary peasant family, so they naturally cannot afford to hire a wedding MC. Now, inviting Chen Tianfu, the most famous person in Qinzhuang besides the clan chief, as the wedding MC is already considered very prestigious. The companion maid got busy and shouted again, All right. The groom and bride, the new couple, come and stand here. Chen Li Song and Lin Jinju followed the instructions of their companion's mother, 
standing in front of Chen Rui and his wife on both sides, preparing to kneel. Chen Tianfu then commanded Chen Rui's disciple Li Taizhu, Taizhu, set off firecrackers. Okay. Li Taizhu took a string of firecrackers from the incense table, picked up a lit incense stick, and headed towards the entrance of the ancestral temple. Slow down. You can't pay respects yet. In the midst of the conversation, a group of men dressed in police uniforms rushed into the ancestral temple of the Qin family, blocking Li Taizhu at the entrance. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Three Twists and Turns on the Day of Marriage You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Three Twists and Turns on the Day of Marriage The speaker is a man in his thirties. Unlike the other six or seven people who came in together, he was not wearing police uniform. Instead, he was wearing a blue long shirt, a blue coat, a red top hat on his head, and a barge gun slung across his body. Chen Tianfu glanced at the man and greeted him, Captain Huang, please. The courtesy is not appropriate, please forgive me. The man clenched his fists at Chen Tianfu, but did not answer. Instead, he walked straight towards Chen Rui. Chen Rui stood up from the chair in front of the incense table and approached the man known as Captain Huang, asking, Captain Huang, my son is getting married today. Why can't we still pay respects? Captain Huang crossed his hands and said to Chen Rui, following the order of Mayor Wang, our army's resistance war is imminent and we need military provisions. We need to immediately go to your house to collect provisions, so your son cannot worship at the moment. But this marriage has found an auspicious and auspicious day. Captain Huang rudely interrupted Chen Rui's words, what an auspicious day. Do you dare to disobey the town government's grain requisition order? Let's go. Take us back to pay the grain. Military civilian cooperation, expelling the Japanese invaders, are you not cooperating? Chen Li Song said, didn't our family already pay for it? We don't have any food left now. Captain Huang put down his forked hand and poked Chen Li Song's chest with his right hand, saying, will your family still have no food? The land by the river that originally belonged to our Huang family has been taken by your family for planting. How much food did you harvest last year? Are you joking with me, Huang Daiming? A person dressed in police uniform approached the police captain named Huang Daiming and stuttered, Huang. Huang team. Team captain, I will go straight. Directly. To him. His house. Search. Huang Daiming said with a gloomy face, Zhao Dutsai, you don't have the right to speak here. The police officer who stumbled over to interject was called Zhao Dutsai, who was quite handsome. The handsomeness of a man is called handsomeness if he is upright, and the fluidity if he is treacherous. Even if Zhao Dutsai didn't speak, he could still see his fluidity. Unfortunately, he still spoke, not only fluidity, but also a flawed fluidity. Such a flowing stutter should not have been admitted to the police force, but he has a beautiful sister who married Mayor Wang as his aunt. How can Huang Daiming refuse to accept the arrangements made by Mayor Wang? Huang Daiming despised Zhao Dezai from the bottom of his heart, and apart from occasionally making sarcastic remarks about him, he couldn't drive him out of the police force. Huang Daiming said that Zhao Dezai didn't have the guts to speak, but in reality, he followed Zhao Dutsai's advice and said, Brothers, go straight to Chen Rui's house. He poked Chen Li Song's chest and said, Are you father and son coming with us? It's not that I'm talking about you. Your wife doesn't know how to run away, and if you change sister. In. Law, you're worried she might run away. After speaking, Huang Daiming waved to everyone and turned to go search for food. Chen Ru suggested that Huang Daiming should come and go as soon as he said, fearing that he would cause chaos in his own home, so he immediately followed him. But he heard Chen Li Song shout, What are you doing? Everyone turned their heads and saw Chen Li Song reaching out and grabbing Zhao Dutsai's hand. Zhao Dutsai quickly broke free from Chen Li Song's hand and withdrew, Hee hee, let me help you see if it's beautiful. He let out a few more, hee hee, sounds, lowered his head, 
and quickly walked forward. Originally, Zhao Detsai wanted to secretly lift the red veil and see what the bride looked like. He speaks fluently without stuttering when doing such things. Huang Daiming turned around and saw that Zhao Dutsai was lost in his lust and embarrassed. He turned around and dragged Zhao Dutsai, waving his hand to urge him to move forward. Because of this wave of his hand, Huang Daiming accidentally touched the red cap on Lin Jinju's head with his fingers. The corner of the red cap was lifted, and Lin Jinju looked at Huang Daiming with a pair of big eyes that were straight to the bone. Seeing that it was a strange man, she quickly lowered her head timidly. Huang Daiming glanced at Lin Jinju, who was about to give up, and secretly marveled at how beautiful a woman could be in this world. Let's go, let's go. Hurry up and search for Chen Rui's house. But his purpose of coming here this time is not to see the bride. He quickly covered the red veil and urged everyone to continue to visit Chen Rui's house. Chen Li Song saw his father leaving the ancestral temple with Huang Daiming, and he couldn't attend the worship hall for the time being, so he also went with him. Lin Jinju didn't see clearly what Huang Daiming, who accidentally lifted the red cap, looked like, but she was really startled when she heard him speak like that. And now that I haven't fully worshipped, I once again stand on the spot, neither standing nor sitting. Besides my companion, it seems that everyone around me is silent. Although Daofeng Town is a town, it is located between two mountains, with the Tianjiang River passing through them. The mountain to the south is called Daoxia, with sword trees and steep terrain. It is said that there are bandits. The mountain to the north is called Fengshan, which sounds like a crane in fear. Although it is not as steep as Daoxia, it is said that there is a team. Huang Daiming from the police team said that they are also bandits. Because Daoxia and Fengshan intersect in the counties of Lexian and Qingxian, this place was once a fortress contested by military forces during the chaos of ancient times. Therefore, the area where the Tianjiang River flows is called Daofeng Town. Daofeng Town governs two villages and four villages. Huanzhuang and Qingzhuang are by the river, while Zhengjia Village, Wanjia Village, Lijia Village, and Linjia Village are by the mountain. So, these two villages and four villages should be considered as mountain villages, and Lin Jinju's maternal family Lin family village is also a mountain village within the mountain village. For girls in mountain villages, marrying into a good family is much stronger than being born into a good family. They were both born in January. Chen Li Song is a monkey, just turned 21, and Lin Jinju is four years younger than him. In fact, everything went smoothly for Chen Li Song to send his sister Chen Song Mei to the Lin family village, but when he came back to pick him up, he met several people who had come down from the Dao Gorge and entangled with him for a while. However, it's okay. Chen Li Song once hunted in the Knife Gorge and met the people there. They asked for some red and released it, but the timing was slightly delayed. 17-year-old Lin Jinju experienced three twists and turns on her wedding day, and she couldn't help but sigh to herself. My mother's family often goes hungry without food, and it's not a good thing for my mother. In laws family to have food now. After marrying into the Chen family, what fate will I have? Fortunately, he is quite supportive of me, and I heard from the matchmaker that our zodiac signs are quite compatible. Now that there is no sound outside the hood, I believe my mother. In law has also gone home with me. Lin Jinju sighs in the ancestral temple. Chen Li Song and his father and his mother follow Huang Daiming and others to run home. Huang Daiming and the police arrived at Chen Rui's doorstep, but Zhao Dutsai was proactive and kicked open the door. Huang. Huang Team. Captain, please. Zhao Detsai half bowed and let Huang Daiming into the courtyard. Huang Daiming did not enter the yard, but turned around and shouted, Li Feijiao. Arrive. A robust man in his thirties quickly walked up to Huang Daiming. You. Go inside and see where their food is hidden. Yes. Li Fei quickly entered the yard and searched around. I, I. I'll go find it too. Zhao Detsai also led the others into the yard. 
Huang Daiming took off his top hat from his head, flicked the brim of his hat with his hand, sighed lightly, and said to Chen Rui with a troubled expression, Chen Rui, Chen Rui. You know, resistance against Japan is a way to save the country. If the National Army doesn't have enough to eat, how can the Japanese soldiers fight when they reach our county of Lushin? Chen Rui said, it's really anti-Japanese and national salvation. We're willing to donate all our food, but we're really out of it. You know, we didn't plant that land for half a year last year and only harvested one season in autumn. How much food can we have? To be honest, Huang Daiming also knew that in the first half of the year, both Chen Rui and Chen Li Song were filling soil and cultivating fields. Zhao Detsai ran out of the yard and said, Huang. Huang Tin. Captain, nothing. 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 What haven't been found? I found new traces of filling at the water well, please let Captain Huang know. Li Feijiao also approached Huang Daiming and reported the discovery to him. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 The play on stage has begun. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 The play on stage has begun. Huang Daiming poked his head in from the gate of the courtyard and glanced in the direction pointed by Li Fei's foot. He leaned back against the gate and flicked the edge of his red hat with his hand before putting it on his head. He said to Chen Rui and his wife, Chen Rui, will you dig it out? Or should I ask my brothers to dig it out? Chen Rui became anxious and said, Captain Huang, Captain Huang, that's reserved for next year's grain. Grain seeds. No need, that land will grow rice on its own. Li Feijiao, let's do it. Yes. In front of Huang Daiming, Li Feijiao could only execute commands. Chen Rui and his wife knelt down to Huang Daiming and begged, holding Huang Daiming's leg, Please, Captain Huang. This seed is our family's destiny this year. Chen Li Song knew that begging Huang Daiming was useless, so he went to pull his parents and said, Dad, Mom, don't beg anymore. Who doesn't know Captain Huang in Daofeng Town? Old Man Rui, your son still has consciousness. Huang Daiming took a few steps back in disgust and broke free from Chen Rui. Li Feijiao took a hoe from the corner of the wall, and after three cuts, he dug up the loose soil by the well and indeed dug out half a bag of millet. Zhao Detsai brought the half bag of millet to Huang Daiming and said, I, let's pay. And seize half. Half. Bags of millet. Is it gone? Is that all? Huang Daiming seemed dissatisfied. Zhao Detsai said, Look. Look, the house. It's not there. It's gone. Huang Daiming asked, Chen Rui, where did she hide all the millet she harvested last year? Didn't we pay for the grain during last year's harvest? With so many people in our family and the need to marry our children, the only half bag of millet left for planting has also been found by you. Captain Huang, I beg you to keep the millet seeds. Li Feijiao, lift it up. Huang Daiming said as he beckoned Li Feijiao to take half a bag of millet, didn't you borrow the seeds from Chen Tianfu last year? Let's borrow them from him again this year. Li Fei's feet were still looking left and right, saying, I don't think their family should just hide this half bag of millet. I need to look again. Chen Li Song complained, Can you borrow it from him? Borrowing one bushel of grain yields five bushels of millet. This is not within my jurisdiction, you can discuss it with him. Huang Daiming saw that Li Feijiao was still looking at this and that, and shouted, what are you looking for? Are you the captain or am I the captain? The play is about to start, don't miss me. Bring it up. After speaking, Huang Daiming asked Li Fei to lift the half bag of millet with his feet and walked away singing the opera along the way. When Chen Li Song saw Li Fei about to leave, he still occasionally turned back to look at their courtyard, quickly closed the door with his parents, and hurried to the ancestral temple. The bride is still waiting in the ancestral temple to pay respects to him. Chen Rui's wife walked and said, Songer, I have to thank Lin Sankai a lot this time. 
Will Li Fei Jiao come back later? Don't worry, even if Li Fei Jiao returns, there's no need to worry. We're not hiding at home. Chen Rui said, still, Song Er is clever. If they don't find this half bag, they might have to demolish the house. The three of them entered the ancestral temple again, but Chen Tianfu disappeared. Bride Lin Jinju is still standing in the hall, leaning against her companion and falling asleep. After Huang Daming's troubles, the guests didn't leave many people waiting there. Thirteen-year-old apprentice Li Taizhu was already in a daze. When he saw his master and senior brother, he immediately stood up from the corner of the wall and ran to Chen Rui, saying, Master, after you all left, Mr. Chen also quietly left. I dare not keep him. Chen Rui nodded and said to Chen Li Song, Please don't move Iron Pillar this time. You need to go and invite him. Do you know where he will be? I know, it must be in the theater. The only stage in the town, with a sea of people under it. Some sat at the front table, some on their own chairs, some on stone mounds and earth walls, and some even stood in the distance in the idle farming season of the first lunar month and during the Chinese New Year holiday, women gather at home to prepare sacrifices and pay respects. Almost all the men who enjoy watching dramas in the entire town of Daofeng have come. It is said to be the whole town, but in fact, most of them are from Qinzhuang and Huangzhuang. Zheng Jiazhai, Wang Jiazhai, Li Jiazi, and Lin Jiazhai are a bit far from the town. During the Chinese New Year, young people have their own playing games such as Pai Gao and Mahjong. However, some middle-aged and elderly people, holding a water pipe, walk along the winding mountain road for more than 10 miles, some even more than 20 miles, to reach the town. Dong, Chang, Dong, Chang. Time has passed, and the gongs, drums, cymbals, and chimes on the stage begin to ring in unison. The troupe is an authentic Confucian troupe invited from Tiancheng, and they perform the hundred-plate incense firewood fan. During the festive season, it's worth a lot of money, and the lights will keep people busy. Accompanying the neighboring women, watching the lanterns, and going to the neighborhood together. Looking up, there are countless ladies in the streets and alleys. Oh, it's really lively, and the girls are shy to go out. Amidst the sound of drums and gongs, the play had already begun. Let's go. Huang Xiaoming squeezed through the crowd wearing a black long shirt. When he squeezed in front of Chen Tianfu, Chen Tianfu grabbed him and said, The show on stage has already begun. Captain Huang, you just came back from searching for food from the Chen family and are in a hurry to go where to search for food. How much difference do you think this actress who plays Lin Ingjie has compared to Zheng Yisuo? Huang Xiaoming reached out and brushed Chen Tianfu's hand away, pointing to Huang Daiming who was not far from them. He smiled and said, Chen Tianfu, thank you for knowing me for so long. I am Huang Xiaoming. Oh. You're looking for Captain Huang. He likes to wear floral clothes and lean against the pillar. You guys have time, take your time. I don't have time for you too, I have to go to school. After speaking, Huang Xiaoming put on a long shirt and continued to squeeze through the crowd. Today is the Yuan Shao, filled round balls made of glutinous rice. Flour for Lantern Festival, festival of the first month. Whose child will come to the school to listen to your lecture? Huang Xiaoming only smiled slightly without responding, and walked away from the theater with broad strides. Huang Daiming, wearing a blue shirt and a green coat, flashed ghostly from the wooden pillar on the stage to Chen Tianfu, placing his hand on Chen Tianfu's shoulder and asking, Chen Tianfu, are you looking for me? I said Captain Huang, the police captain also needs to look like a police captain. Can you change into police clothes and wear them? You two twins, if you don't tell each other, who can distinguish which one is the older brother and which one is the younger brother? How much did you loot at Chen Rui's house just now? Chen Rui's family has no wealth. My younger brother is me, and I am my younger brother. Who makes me twin with him? Huang Daiming didn't care if Chen Tianfu would ask him to sit down. He put his hand down from Chen Tianfu's shoulder, pulled a stool straight over, sat down at the eight immortals table, 
and reached out to take an orange from the table and eat it. You're too rude. However, this Dao Fong town belongs to the Huang family, so it's not wrong for you to be arrogant. Huang Daiming spat out a few orange seeds from his mouth and said, Don't talk nonsense. If Mayor Wang hears about it, I won't have any good fruit to eat. Didn't you just want to chat with me? Why can't you bear to eat one of your oranges? I mean your rude figure squeezing through the crowd. Is it difficult for me to be like my younger brother, squeezing along the way and apologizing to others by saying, make way? If these people don't make way, I'll take them all to the police station. Watch the show, watch the show. Chen Tianfu seemed a bit helpless towards Huang Daiming and said, watch the play, watch the play. Tianfu brother. Tianfu brother. As they were about to concentrate on watching the play, a shout came from the crowd, as if competing with the drums, cymbals, and chimes on the stage. Huang Daiming recognized Chen Lisong's voice and said, The play on this stage has already begun. Does this kid come to you to accuse me? How dare you disturb me while watching the play? Li Fei Jiao. Ah. Li Fei quickly squeezed his way through the crowd and stood in front of Huang Daiming. You bring the person over to me. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Unconvinced Li Fei Jiao. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Unconvinced Li Fei Jiao, okay. As soon as Li Fei finished speaking, he quickly flashed through the crowd and rushed towards Chen Li Song. Chen Tianfu smiled slightly and said, Don't be so nervous. Isn't it just that the groom wants me to help him host the wedding ceremony? You've delayed his good day. Good guy, that land has been devoid of human race for hundreds of years. After being cleaned up by their father and son, it turned into fertile land. Yeah, they harvested a lot of food on that land last year, so Chen Rui, the old man, arranged a marriage for Chen Li Song in the Lin family village. He changed his sister Dot in Dot Law and exchanged his daughter Chen Songmei with Lin Liangdong's son and daughter in the Lin family village. This land is now very fertile. It used to be flooded, but now it has turned into a good field. That piece of land was previously allocated to you in Huangzhuang, but you still don't want it in Huangzhuang. Huang Daiming suddenly blinked his eyes and asked, Oh. Did that land originally belong to our Huangzhuang? At the beginning of the Republic of China, our town re-divided the land because this area was often flooded and uninhabited. We were still young at that time. Two years ago, there were bandits in Fengshan, and the town office was afraid that Chen Rui's family would have no land to grow and would hunt on the mountain all year round, afraid of being corrupted by bandits. So, was that why we gave them this piece of land to grow? Oh my, such a good place! I regret it now. I need to find a way to get it back. Chen Tianfu smiled and said, You're really greedy. That was given by the county mayor Wang. Huang Daiming smiled and said, Ha ha ha. Just talk, just talk. I'm not lacking in space either. Captain Huang, bring me. Li Fei led Chen Li Song and squeezed in from the crowd, squeezing into front of Chen Tianfu and Huang Daiming. Huang Daiming shouted with a dark face, didn't you see that the play on this stage has already started? What are you shouting for? It's a waste of my time. Chen Li Song took out a red envelope from his body and quietly handed it to Huang Daiming, while saying to Qin Tianfu, Tianfu, my wedding is waiting for you to host. Can you come over now? Oh my! This scene has all started. Chen Tianfu watched as Huang Daiming took Chen Li Song's red envelope and stuffed it into his coat pocket. He didn't get up, but instead sat up and corrected it. Huang Daiming had changed his smile and asked Chen Li Song, Your mind is more agile than your wooden father. I was just about to ask you, why did the bandits from Daoxia release you when we got married today? Chen Li Song smiled and said, They are actually farmers who have no fields or land nearby. Huang Daiming suddenly changed his face. He reached out and grabbed Chen Li Song's collar and pulled him to him. He coldly interrupted Chen Li Song's words and said, Chen Li Song, how dare you associate with bandits? 
Chen Lisong smiled and said to Huang Daiming, Captain Huang laughed, how dare Xiaoman. After speaking, his eyes quickly looked towards Chen Tianfu. Under the pleading gaze of Chen Li Song, Chen Tianfu calmly reconciled and said, People from Kuandao Fengshan may not be able to join the bandits in our Chen family, the Ming brothers. It's hard to say. Don't get caught by me. Chen Li Song took out another red envelope from his body, which was thicker than the one he had just handed over. He quietly handed it over and respectfully said, Captain Huang, you also searched at my house just now. We were hunters who ran wild without stopping. Now that Mayor Wang and Captain Huang have been kind to me by giving me such a good piece of land, I should be diligent in farming. It's not even time for me to be grateful. How dare I connect with any bandits? On the way back from picking up the bride, they met someone who came down from Daoxia. Chen Li Song had originally wrapped several red envelopes to give to them, but they saw that the person getting married was the hunter Chen Li Song. They only symbolically asked for one red envelope and left, so Chen Li Song still had a few red envelopes on him. Don't beat his mother Mayor Wang over me. Huang Daiming said as he took away the red envelope and loosened Chen Li Song's collar. Li Feijiao suddenly asked Chen Li Song, Chen Li Song, have you hidden the other grains elsewhere? Don't make things difficult for me, didn't you just search for the last half bag of grain seeds in my house? Li Fei looked at Chen Li Song with a skeptical expression and said, No, if we really searched everything, would you be so calm? Chen Li Song sighed and said, What else can I do? I didn't farm before, but my family still survived. I can only secretly run to Fengshan to fight wild again. What's going on? What's going on? Time has passed, it's unlucky. Do you still want to marry a wife? Lin Sankai from the Lin family village also squeezed in from the crowd. Originally, after Lin Sankai came out of the Chen family ancestral temple, he stayed at the theater to watch the play for a while when he saw it had already started. Chen Tianfu smiled slightly and shouted, Lin Sankai, I know you. Are you here to be the uncle or the uncle of the bride? Lin Sankai did not answer Chen Tianfu. He pushed Li Fei's foot aside and pulled Chen Li Song to his side, asking, Brother, are you okay? The bride is waiting for you to pay respects. Li Fei's foot was pushed by Lin Sankai, and he unconsciously took two steps back, retreating to Huang Daiming's side. He watched as Huang Daiming received two red envelopes from Chen Li Song and knew that Huang Daiming had already benefited enough. Naturally, he would let Chen Li Song go, so he didn't care about Lin Sankai pushing him. I'm here to ask Tian Fu Gu to host the wedding ceremony. Lin Sankai gave Chen Tian Fu a cold glance and shouted loudly, Your Tian Fu brother can't leave to watch the play. Let me help you host it. Do you also know this? I know so much. Let's go. Lin Sankai said, dragging Chen Li Song into the crowd. Chen Li Song turned around and shouted to Chen Tianfu, Tianfu, come over and have a drink later after watching the play. Hey hey hey. Although Huang Daiming had already let Chen Li Song go in his heart, he saw Lin Sankai pushing and shoving his subordinate Li Feijiao in front of him. After all, face was a bit difficult, and for a moment, he wanted to stand up, but was held back by Chen Tianfu. Chen Tianfu whispered to Huang Daiming, do you know why Lin Sankai is called Lin Sankai? Tianfu brother, you know the people of the entire town. I admire him. How could he be named Lin Sankai? Let me tell you what. First, silly, second, straight. Aren't all the farmers in the mountains and fields like this? Thirdly, you have good martial arts skills. You're both foolish and straight, and adding this talent to your martial arts skills, I'm afraid you'll lose out. Chen Tianfu spoke in a low voice, singing a play on the stage. If Huang Daiming wanted to hear him, his actual voice was not low. Li Feijiao, who was pushed by Lin Sankai to their side, only realized after hearing these words that he had just been pushed over by Lin Sankai. He rolled up his sleeves and looked at the backs of Lin Sankai and Chen Li Song, and said defiantly, 
is his kung fu good? I'll go find him now. Huang Daiming stopped Li Fei Jiao and said, You kid must have had such a hard time with him. Don't call him Li Fei Jiao in the future, just call him Li San. Ha ha ha. You said he's good at punching. I don't believe it, his arms can twist past my thighs. Ten years ago, a man who had escaped from the Northern War came to Li Fei Jiao's home. That man turned out to be a martial arts master, and Li Fei Jiao followed him to learn Northern legs for ten years. Since Li Fei Jiao joined the police force, everyone gradually knows that Li Fei Jiao has good leg and foot skills. I don't remember his real name anymore, only calling him Li Fei Jiao, so Li Fei Jiao became his name. Chen Tianfu and Huang Daiming couldn't help but burst into laughter when they heard Li Fei Jiao's foolish words. Li Fei Jiao knew that he had been teased by the two of them again, but one was a famous official in the town and the other was his boss. Even though he knew they were laughing at what he said, he dared not speak up. You step down. The play on stage is still playing, and Huang Daiming still has to watch it. Li Fei glared fiercely at the direction in which Lin Sankai had left and said to Huang Daiming, Captain, then I'll leave first. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Rural Villagers from the City You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Rural Villagers from the City Amidst Misty Rain, the Tian River in Spring Flows Lazily The fields are slanted with rice stalks, some lying in the mud, some wearing white mud hats, and some exposing their bodies that have been burned. Chen Li Song was wearing a bamboo hat and lazily walking towards the Lin family village carrying two bags of millet. He was covered in hot air, and the drizzle dripped on him quickly. It's said to be two bags of millet, but in reality, it doesn't add up to half a bag. For Chen Li Song, this is too light, as light as wearing an extra piece of clothing. But that's all there was to it. On the day of his wedding, Huang Daiming and the police searched for half a bag by the well. Fortunately, Lin Sankai sent the news early, and he and his father picked the millet early and hid it in the cellar in the mountains. His younger sister Chen Songmei married into the Lin family village. To go from Qinzhuang to Lin Jiazhai, you need to cross the fields by the river and pass through Huangzhuang. Chen Songmei's family, also known as Lin Jinju's mother's family, has limited land and the mountainous areas it has been allocated to are also barren. The bag of millet that was sent to her during last year's engagement has long been eaten up. Now we need to send some food to my brother. In law's uncle's family so that they can survive until the harvest in the field. Chen Li Song glanced at the fields by the river, and the two small bags of millet he picked were harvested from that field. The rain is very light, and Tianjiang is still lazily flowing. His field is bathing in the spring rain. The land by the river is a fertile field. Of course, it was he and his father who worked hard to pick soil from the edge of Fengshan that turned it into fertile land. Hello. Chen Li Song. Did you miss your little daughter dot in dot law at home again just after leaving? Hang the golden pearl on your waistband. A rough voice emerged from behind Chen Li Song. Lin Sankai. You've been living in the city for so many years, why are you still so vulgar? The white rice in the city doesn't feed you any more refined. Chen Li Song didn't even need to look back, he knew it was Lin Sankai. Speaking of which, Lin San can be considered a member of his wife's family, but he has been an orphan since childhood. The land in Lin Jiazhai does not produce as much grain as Huangzhuang and Qinzhuang by the Tianjiang River. Lin Sankai went to Tiancheng early to pull yellow carts for a living. A yellow charter car rushed past Chen Li Song, and it was indeed Lin Sankai. Chen Li Song quickly caught up with the yellow chartered carriage and said, You pull the carriage, I carry a burden, and on the road in town, do you still want to run faster than me? Then give it a try. Hey, hey, hey. The puller, focus on pulling your car. It's pulling so hard, don't pull our mother and daughter down in the river, okay? A high dot profile female voice came from inside the yellow carriage. No, don't worry. Have you met a relative? Let's have a chat, 
Lin Sankai replied with a smile. Chen Lisong glanced at the car and saw a woman in her thirties and a young girl the size of his wife Lin Jinju sitting on the yellow carriage. This lady is truly beautiful, but her eyes are full of anger as she gazes at Lin Sansai's back, as if she wants to burn Lin Sansai's clothes on this rainy day. The girl was holding a book in one hand and gripping the seat edge of the yellow carriage with the other hand, afraid of falling off. The wife said discontentedly, why are you talking to the country bumpkins for a while? I paid to ride in your car, not to listen to you chat. Lin Sankai slowed down his pace and said, yes, yes. Chen Lisong also slowed down and walked side by side with the rickshaw, saying, are you pulling from Tiancheng all the way to Daofeng town? Do you doubt it? I don't doubt it, Chen Lisong said as he walked, glancing at the beautiful woman in the car. I don't even doubt if you brought me from Chongqing to our Daofeng town. I just think this sister from the city is really capable of making trouble. She even rented a yellow charter car from Tiancheng to come to our Daofeng town to see the scenery. We're not here to see the scenery. The girl in the car saw the yellow carriage slow down and relaxed her hand on the seat edge, gripping the book tightly with both hands. The young woman glanced at the girl next to her and said, Close your mouth and don't talk to the country bumpkins. Do you think they are classmates at your school? Chen Li Song was a bit annoyed, why did she address herself with one sentence of country bumpkin on the left and one sentence of country bumpkin on the right? Yo yo yo. Lin Sankai suddenly stopped the car, turned around, and stared straight at the lady, holding her arm and saying, This lady from the city, how much did you give me for renting my car to Daofeng town? Did I say I won't give you money? The wife looked dissatisfied. The girl placed the book in her hand on the edge of her seat and reached out to pull at Madam, saying, Mom. Oh. Did chatting with the country bumpkin get in your way? Lin Sankai argued with the lady. Chen Li Song saw Lin Sankai stop the car to argue with his wife and scolded, I said Lin Sankai, do you talk about the virtues of pulling a car? Why did you get into a quarrel with the customer? Lin Sankai said, I can't stand the faces of the so dot called country bumpkins from the city. Even the country bumpkins are not as good. Why don't you come to our Dao Fong town? Madam said, what kind of country bumpkin from the city? You low dot quality country bumpkin, you will always be a country bumpkin. Lin Sankai said, come on, come on, you city dwellers, please get off my car. What? You asked me to get off the car. I already rented your car. The wife was a bit furious. Yes. You esteemed city resident, I won't serve you anymore. Lin Sankai hugged his arms and turned his head to one side, looking towards the direction of Fengshan. The mountaintop of Fengshan is shrouded in clouds and mist, and now it seems like it's raining a bit harder, with a thicker fog color. I have to pay you to bring me to the Zheng family village, said the wife angrily. Lin Sankai glanced at her and said, I don't want your little money, young master. I can't hold on to the country bumpkins from the city. What kind of country bumpkin from the city? What are you talking about? You two are the real country bumpkins. The wife was really furious. The girl pulled her mother's sleeve and said, Mom. You've been saying that rural people are not good all the way up until now. I think it's the same in rural and urban areas. Don't say anything more. Chen Li Song could see that the girl was full of dissatisfaction with her mother, but she also had no choice but to treat her mother. You see, your daughter also said that you've been talking about rural people all the way up until now. Isn't that why you're not from our Daofeng town? Lin Sankai didn't even look at her directly and nagged. Yo yo yo. You're still thinking about your relatives in the countryside. It's been so long since you've been in the city, no wonder you're still pulling a broken car without a wife. The young woman continued to speak harshly. Lin Sansai's face was a bit sullen as he approached and pulled her out of the car, saying, Come on, come on, I've heard of you all the way, rural bumpkin. Aren't you Zheng Yi from our Dao Feng town's Jing family village? 
How come after marrying into Tiancheng for more than ten years, Zheng Yi has become Aunt Zheng and a member of the city? Lin Sankai changed his tone from you to you, and decided that it was impossible to bring that lady back, let alone bring them back to the city. Chen Li Song tried to smooth things out and said, Don't be angry, it's all my fault. Lin San just met me and said a few more words to me. The lady, who was called Aunt Zheng by Lin Sankai, turned around and pulled her daughter off the yellow carriage, saying, You're a dead puller, don't want the fare. I really don't want the stinky money from the rural bumpkins in the city. Lin Sankai saw Aunt Zheng pulling her daughter and stumbling towards the Zheng family's village, feeling relieved of his hatred. Suddenly, he looked a little proud and shouted behind Aunt Zheng, I see how you can go back to the city after visiting your mother's house. I see you shouldn't go back to Tiancheng, just stay in our Daofeng town. You still look down on us rural bumpkins. End of this chapter Chapter 6 The Massacre of Zheng Family Village You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 The Massacre of Zheng Family Village Chen Li Song was a bit speechless towards Lin Sankai and shook his head, saying, You're just like a shrew. I can't stand this kind of person. Lin Sankai stepped forward and patted Chen Li Song's shoulder, grabbing Chen Li Song's two small bags of grain and throwing them onto the yellow carriage. Let's go, let's go drink in town first. How long haven't we been drinking alone? I didn't drink enough on your wedding day, and our brothers are drunk today. After speaking, pick up the yellow charter and walk forward on your own. Speaking of which, on my wedding day, I had to thank you for coming to report, otherwise we wouldn't have this millet and no wine to drink. Chen Li Song continued, looking at the back of Aunt Zhang and the girl, do you really have the heart to leave them on this road? Lin Sankai stopped and said casually, Zheng Family Village will be here after passing through Lin Family Village. Don't be impatient. Then Aunt Zheng is already a girl from our Daofeng town, just a village girl marrying into the city. I said you, Chen Li Song, are you also married to adulthood? How come you still have so much sympathy? You won't see someone loving each other again, will you? Don't mistreat my Jinju sister. Chen Li Song swung the pole to scare Lin Sankai and said, You've only seen one loving another. Lin Sankai continued to pull the rickshaw, ignoring Chen Li Song's pole and laughing, Want to fight? I'll give you a pole. I'm not as caring as you are, so I haven't had a woman yet. Do I still need a pole to fight with you? You're always so straightforward, no wonder no woman likes you. Lin Sankai didn't care and said, Ha ha. Look at what you said. Let's go drink. Don't worry about the two of them, I also walked back to Daofeng town with my feet. Chen Li Song said, I need to give the millet to my sister first. Lin Sankai said, What's the rush? I've been pulling a car from Tiancheng all the way here and haven't had a sip of water yet. Can you accompany me to have a sip of water first? Chen Li Song said, How strong is the wine you need to drink? Ha ha ha, it's still my own brothers who understand. The two of them were looking for a liquor shop in the town, and Lin San finally stopped the yellow charter car. Chen Li Song reached out and took two small bags of millet from the rickshaw, and saw a book on the seat of the rickshaw. This book belongs to that girl, Chen Li Song thought of the girl sitting in the car just now, holding this book in her hand. It should have been reluctantly left behind when her mother pulled her out of the car. I haven't read much books, of course this book isn't mine, Lin San realized it was the girl's book. Then let's send it first. Why are you in such a hurry? We also need to eat first, fill our stomachs, and then send them over. They are going back to their mother's house, right in Zheng Yijing's village, and people don't run away. Lin Sankai naturally knew where Aunt Zheng was going back to her mother's house. After drinking a little alcohol, Lin San finally talked about how Aunt Zheng would package his car early in the morning, how she would teach her daughter not to look up to any rural boy, and how she would dislike the rural people in Daofeng town. Then he said that he should have thrown her on the road long ago. Chen Li Song just smiled and shook his head, without making any comments. 
They left the wine shop, and Chen Lisong stuffed the book on the table into his arms. He picked up the pole and picked up the two bags of millet, saying, Let's go. Give the book back to that little girl first, scatter the wine first, and then go to Song Mei's house to deliver the food, so that my sister won't say I'm drinking again. From a distance, Lin San Kai heard a few sounds resembling firecrackers. With a hint of alcohol, he said, someone set off firecrackers to welcome us. Aren't you tired of carrying them? Put the millet in my car. Chen Li Song, however, didn't listen to him and walked straight ahead carrying the millet, saying, how could you set off firecrackers like this? What if you drink too much and pull the overturned cart to scatter the millet on the ground? Let's go. Lin Sankai picked up his yellow cart and followed Chen Li Song towards Zheng Yijing's house in the Zheng family village. In a short while, we arrived at the Zheng family village, but from a distance, we could see the direction of Zheng Yijing's house with fireworks soaring into the sky, and we could hear the noisy voices, mixed with the cries and curses of the young girl and Aunt Cheng. What happened? Chen Li Song felt a little uneasy in his heart, thinking about what had happened. Looking back, he no longer saw Lin Sansai's person and car. From a distance, I heard Lin Sansai's roar. Zhao Detsai, you rascal, did you also do things like setting fire? Chen Li Song saw Zhao Detsai holding a gun in one hand and a torch in the other, lighting fires around Zheng Yijing's house. Another police officer was holding a gun and staring blankly on the side. Zheng's aunt was kicked to the ground, and the girl was crying while holding her mother. The surrounding people gathered near Zheng Yijing's house, but they were all as dull as the police officer, only looking at her without saying a word. Get away from me. Don't provoke Mr. Zhao. I'm out of bullets in my gun, or I'll kill you one by one. Zhao Detsai said without stuttering. Aunt Zheng, who fell to the ground, cried and shouted, This damn thing has destroyed my brother's house. I am Zheng Yi, everyone help me catch the damn thing. Zhao Detsai waved a torch and turned around to scare the onlookers, saying, Who dares to manage Mr. Zhao's affairs? You third master. Lin Sankai stepped forward and punched Zhao Detsai to the ground, then stomped on him and shouted, Oh my! With this punch, Zhao Detsai couldn't get up anymore. He shouted to another police officer, Lu Guolong, get the gun. Lin Sankai glanced at the police officer named Lu Guolong, who was frightened by Lin Sansai's gaze and took a few steps back. Lin Sankai ignored him and shouted, Everyone, come and put out the fire. But apart from Chen Li Song and the girl who left her mother behind, no one from the onlookers came to put out the fire. The girl cried and shouted, risking her life to come and extinguish the fire. Unexpectedly, many southern mountain villages built houses with wood. Although it was still drizzling at this time, the fiery fire ignited her clothes. Chen Li Song saw her like this and immediately pulled her out to extinguish the flames. And as the girl continued to pounce into the fire, Chen Li Song had no choice but to hug her and place her next to Aunt Cheng, ordering, You stay tuned for your mother. Don't save her. Just now, while putting out the fire and rescuing people, he had already seen four corpses lying horizontally on the ground inside the house, and another woman died naked on the bed. Zheng Yijing's family of five have been exterminated. The naked woman is Zheng Yijing's wife, and the four people lying on the ground are Zheng Yijing, his parents, and son. Faced with the tragic situation of the Zheng family, Chen Li Song couldn't help but feel angry. Seeing that the house could no longer save the fire, he turned around and rushed towards Zhao Detsai sitting on the ground. At this moment, Chen Li Song only had one thought in his chest. To ask Zhao Detsai to pay for the lives of the five people in the house. But he was already one step late because Lin Sankai couldn't catch his fire anymore. He had already turned around, staring at his congested eyes and using his powerful hands, he twisted Zhao Detsai's neck hard. In just a moment, Lin San solved Zhao Detsai without any conscription, while Zheng Yijing's house slowly collapsed in the fire, continuing to burn amidst the continuous drizzle and the cries of Zheng's mother and son. 
Lu Guolong saw that Lin Sankai had instantly killed Zhao Detsai. In a panic, he raised his gun at Lin Sankai and grabbed his finger on the trigger, pleading, it's none of my business. Only Zhao Detsai did this. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Lin Sankai runs with a gun on his back. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 7 Lin Sankai runs with a gun on his back Lin Sankai, with only his martial arts skills, aimed his gun at Lu Guolong and stood there bewildered for a moment. Aunt Cheng and her daughter were just crying and shouting. In the blink of an eye, Lin Sankai helped them seek revenge, and they were stunned for a moment. They looked straight at Lin Sankai and then at Lu Guolong, so scared that they stopped crying and didn't dare to speak. At this moment, only Zheng Yijing's house was burning around, occasionally emitting a crackling sound of burning wood. Chen Li Song was not afraid that Lu Guolong would shoot Lin Sankai. He knew that this person was timid, but his heart was not bad. He was just afraid that his hand would shake and his gun would go off, injuring his brother Lin Sankai. He quickly picked up two small stones from the ground, one aimed at the barrel of the gun and the other at his wrist, and threw them out with the agility of a hunter. I could only hear a crisp sound and Lu Guolong's exclamation of surprise, and then the gun fell to the ground with a clatter. Lin Sankai saw that the gun had landed and immediately woke up from his confusion, quickly rushing towards Lu Guolong. Chen Li Song saw him rushing towards Lu Guolong and quickly flew to block between Lu Guolong and Lin Sankai. He was very conscious and quickly stepped on the gun that Lu Guolong had dropped to the ground with his foot, hugged Lin Sankai, and said to him, Sankai brother, Lu Guolong is not evil. You cannot kill him too. Lu Guolong was already scared out of his wits. He knelt down in front of them with a plop and begged for mercy, it's really none of my business. Lin Sankai saw that he was being held by Chen Li Song and couldn't move, and he had suddenly recovered from his drunken state just now. His mind was already clear, and he shouted, Can you tell me what's going on? But Lu Guolong said, Run quickly. You have killed Mayor Wang's brother. In law, and Captain Huang and his brothers are collecting grain nearby. If you don't run again, there won't be enough time. Lin Sankai shouted again, what are you and us? It's me who killed this beast. What's the relationship with Chen Li Song? You should know, if it weren't for Chen Li Song blocking me just now, you would have gone down early to accompany that beast. Tell me what's going on. Yes, yes, it's not Chen Li Song's business. Chen Li Song just saved him, and Lu Guolong was very clear. I, we came to Zheng Yijing's house to collect food but Zheng Yijing was not there. Only his wife was holding the baby and breastfeeding, and Zhao Detsai became lecherous and raped her. Zheng Yijing and his parents came back from the field, and Zheng Yijing wanted to kill Zhao Detsai with a kitchen knife. Zhao Detsai shot them all. Do you have a share? Lu Guolong still knelt on the ground, reached out his hand and swore to the sky, heaven is above. If Lu Guolong participates, the sky will thunder five times. Believe you for now, get up. Lin Sansai's emotions gradually stabilized and he looked at the large group of onlookers next to him, pondering how this matter would end. Lin Sankai said to Chen Li Song, You also let go of me. I just killed someone, and it was someone from the government. Are you going to arrest me and send me to the government? Chen Li Song immediately released him and said, Run quickly. Anyway, you'll be alone in Tiancheng. Run back to Tiancheng and don't come back. At this moment, someone from the onlookers spoke up. It's over, it's over. After that, the offspring will kill the officials and catch them. If caught, they will be beheaded. The officials are still wearing official uniforms. Zheng Yijing's family is too pitiful. Will they catch us too? Let's watch as the officials arrive and leave quickly. It's two offspring. The other young boy heard that he had just gotten married. Lin Sankai couldn't bear to listen anymore and shouted loudly, What are you talking about? One person does things and one person takes responsibility. I won't change my name or surname, 
and it's me who killed that beast. My name is Lin Sankai. Chen Li Song urged him, stop chattering. Run quickly. Lin Sankai felt justified and turned to Zhao Detsai's side, kicking him hard twice before going to pull his yellow cart. Chen Li Song grabbed the handle of the yellow charter car and scolded, why do you still think about this car? Is life important or is the car important? Lin Sankai nodded, picked up Lu Guolong's gun from the ground, carried it on his back, and said to Lu Guolong, Lin Sankai, I'm the only one who did the killing of Zhao Detsai. You cannot implicate my brother, otherwise I, Lin Sankai, will come back at any time to take your dog's life. Keep your word. Lu Guolong saw that Lin Sankai suddenly had a fierce expression on his face. He quickly nodded and said with a trembling voice, No, I won't harm Chen Li Song. Lin Sankai saw that Lu Guolong had agreed, hugged Chen Li Song, and then turned around and ran towards Tian Cheng. Chen Li Song watched as Lin Sankai ran away and told Lu Guolong again, You can't add insult to injury by saying bad things about Lin Sankai. Lu Guolong felt that Chen Li Song had just saved his life, only nodding desperately. Zheng Yijing's house was completely burned to ashes, along with the bodies of five deceased Zhao Dutsai guns. Chen Li Song looked at Aunt Zheng and her daughter pitifully and asked, What are you two doing now? Are you going back to Tiancheng? Aunt Zheng no longer regarded Chen Li Song as a country bumpkin and helplessly said, I want to bury my parents, younger brother, and sister. In. Law before returning. At this moment, Lu Guolong also woke up and suddenly whispered to Chen Li Song, Little brother, I suggest you run quickly too. Don't wait for our Captain Huang to come. Do you know what the relationship between Zhao Dezai's sister Zhao Lingyi and our Captain Huang is? Chen Li Song naturally didn't know what their relationship was, and what their relationship was about was none of his own business. I didn't kill Zhao Dezai, why did I run away? And Zhao Dezai deserves it. As he was speaking, Li Fei arrived with a member of the police force. As soon as Li Fei stepped forward, he saw Zhao Detsai lying on the ground, the house turned into ashes, and Aunt Zheng and her daughter. He asked Lu Guolong, what's wrong with Zhao Detsai? What's going on here? Lu Guolong briefly and clearly told Li Fei Jiao about Zhao Detsai's rape of Zheng Yijing's wife, the shooting of Zheng Yijing's entire family, and Lin Sansai's killing of Zhao Detsai, ignoring Chen Li Song's throwing of stones. Li Fei Jiao bluntly uttered the following sentence. Zhao Detsai, this beast, deserves to die a thousand times. Such a death would be a good deal for him. Chen Li Song listened to Li Fei Jiao scolding Zhao Detsai and continued, These two mothers and daughters are quite pitiful. Can the police arrange for the aftermath? Li Fei Jiao looked at Chen Li Song from head to toe, then at Chen Li Song's pole and two bags of millet, and asked, are these two bags of millet yours? Upon hearing his question, Chen Li Song inwardly complained and quickly said, This is not millet. Li Fei Jiao quickly squeezed the bag and laughed, Chen Li Song, let me tell you. I finally caught you this time. Yuan Shao, filled round balls made of glutinous rice. Flour for Lantern Festival, Festival had known you had hidden the food, and it was indeed hidden. Where else is the food hidden? Tell me. Before he could finish speaking, people rushed towards Chen Li Song. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Far Away Gunshots. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Far Away Gunshots. Chen Li Song saw Li Fei's foot coming fiercely, and he had always heard that Li Fei's leg skills were excellent. He was very conflicted in his heart not knowing whether Li Fei's foot was coming towards him to kick him, or whether he only wanted to catch himself. He was hesitating when Li Fei stopped and listened attentively. They heard several distant gunshots coming from the northeast and southeast directions. Chen Li Song can now determine that these are definitely gunshots of murder, even though he has always been a hunter. The sound of a hunter's gunshot is different from this kind of gunshot. Just now, after arriving at Zheng Yijing's house with Lin Sankai, it was confirmed that this gunshot can kill people, not from the hunting guns used to hunt prey on the mountain, let alone firecrackers. 
Li Fei muttered, it's our people doing bad things again. He turned around and kicked Zhao Dutsai's body, saying, son of a bitch, damn it. The reputation of the Daofeng town police force has been tarnished by him. He has grown a handsome face. Although Li Feijiao was born tall, his face was covered in flesh and his beard was shaky, giving him a fierce and evil appearance. At this point, the drizzle had turned into light rain, and everyone was gradually getting wet. The onlookers saw that the rain was getting heavier and stood under the eaves of houses further away, continuing to watch and occasionally pointing and pointing. Aunt Cheng saw that they seemed to be unable to fight, and although Li Feijiao looked ugly, he was quite upright. She thought of her parents, younger brother, sister dot in dot law, and nephew who had died tragically, and in an instant, she felt sad again. She hugged her head with her daughter in the rain and began to cry. Especially for her, after all, the deceased were her own parents and brothers, and she began to wail while crying. As soon as Li Feijiao saw the woman crying and wailing, he became very agitated in his heart. He didn't even glance at the mother and daughter and said to Lu Guolong, You, you, tell them that we will help collect the bodies here. They should go as far as they can and don't interfere with our work. However, Lu Guolong knew that this seemed unreasonable and said, The ones who died under Zhao Datsai's gun were the woman's parents and brothers. Why don't you let them go? If they don't leave, can I walk on the side? Li Fei said to his companions, Zheng Qiyun, you and Lu Guolong clean up together. When the fire goes out, move the body of the Zheng family to the mountain and dig a pit to bury it. Lu Guolong, you are responsible for carrying Zhao Dutsai back. Ah. I'll carry it. Lu Guolong looked puzzled. If you don't carry it, will I carry it? Li Feijiao obediently followed Huang Daiming's advice, but spoke confidently in front of other colleagues. Chen Li Song saw that the situation with the Zheng family had settled down, and the wine he drank with Lin Sankai had long disappeared. He didn't remember why he and Lin Sankai came to find this mother and daughter, let alone the book that the girl had left on Lin Sansai's car. He walked up to Aunt Zheng and sympathetically said, Things have reached this point. Let's go with sorrow. Since the officials are helping you, I have to go to the Lin family village to find my sister. Li Feijiao had reached Chen Lisong's side at some point and had already grabbed his collar, shouting, Killing Zhao Ditsai is a death sentence. Do you still want to leave? Chen Lisong was caught tightly by Li Fei's foot and couldn't move for a moment. He quickly argued, I didn't kill Zhao Ditsai. Lu Guolong was grateful for Chen Lisong's life. Saving kindness just now and quickly came over and said, Zhao Dutsai's death has nothing to do with him. Don't misunderstand Fei Jiao brother. Li Fei Jiao stubbornly said, Lu Guolong, get out of here and do your job. Even if Zhao Dutsai was not killed by him, he hid food and even deceived me, it would be a death penalty. Chen Lisong saw Li Fei's feet tightly clenching and refusing to let go. If he wanted to escape, he would inevitably have to take action with him. He was hesitating whether to take action with Li Fei's feet, but he heard a furious shout from the side. What kind of capital crime? Who killed Zhao Dutsai? They not only heard angry cheers, but also a noisy sound of footsteps, and it seemed like there were many people. Immediately, Chen Li Song heard a lot of discussion from the people around him, and the main idea was. This young man is finished. It seems that we must pay for the life of Zhao Dutsai, who was killed in heaven. A man around 35 years old appeared in front of them with a team of about 20. 30 people in high spirits. Some of these people are dressed in the uniforms of the National Army, some are dressed in police uniforms, and some are dressed as villagers, each holding a long gun and wrapped around their waist with a magazine full of bullets. Chen Lisong's heart sank as soon as he saw the leading man. He is too clear about who this man is. He is the brother dot in dot law of Zhao Dutsai, the mayor of Daofeng town who gave the land by the Tianjiang River to their family two years ago, and the brother dot in dot law of Zhao Dutsai who just twisted his neck with both hands by Lin Sankai. The saying goes that killing pays off, 
and the key is that Chen Li Song is not the one who killed Zhao Dezai. But Mayor Wang's formation, with so many people and guns, is clearly aimed at revenge. He must execute the person who killed Zhao Dezai. Everyone knows the key, Lin Sankai and himself are good brothers and have close ties. It seems that he is in big trouble today. Mayor Wang crouched down in front of Zhao Dezai's body, examined the fatal location, and then asked, who killed Zhao Dezai? Li Feijiao said, it was Lin Sankai, the brother of this kid, who killed him. Mayor Wang stood up and glanced at Chen Li Song, saying, Are you Chen Li Song, the son of Chen Rui? Didn't you kill Zhao Dezai? Chen Li Song heard that Mayor Wang recognized him and felt that he should let go. However, his mouth spoke out his thoughts, saying, I didn't really kill him, but what Zhao Dezai did angers both people and gods. How angry everyone is! Mayor Wang seemed very excited and repeated, how angry everyone is. Li Fei grabbed Chen Li Song's collar and dragged him to Mayor Wang, asking, Mayor Wang, do you want this kid to pay for Zhao Dazai's life? To pay for it? Who will pay for it? Lin Sankai? Or Chen Li Song? Dig a hole behind the mountain and bury this kid for me. Everyone follow me. Wang Zhenchenghong looked at him, as if he didn't even glance at Chen Li Song, nor did he look at Zhao Dezai who was dead on the ground anymore. He only waved his hand at the soldiers, police officers, and villagers of the National Army who held long guns he brought, and then walked forward. Yes. Li Feijiao received instructions from Mayor Wang and tightened Chen Li Song's grip, dragging him directly towards the back mountain of Jing family village. Chen Li Song thought to himself, this little life is over. Unfortunately, our family only married Lin Jinju, who is the same size as Aunt Zhang's daughter. She will be widowed at a young age. He didn't want to die, but when he saw these twenty or thirty guns, he broke free from the control of Li Feijiao. If he wanted to defeat twenty or thirty people's guns with one person's strength, he would probably die immediately on the spot. He had to obediently be dragged to the back mountain by Li Feijiao, and then find a way to escape from Li Feijiao's hands. Thinking of this, Chen Li Song did not resist and allowed Li Fei's feet to drag him along. Lu Guolong murmured softly, I didn't expect Mayor Wang to be so reckless with his life. Upon hearing Lu Guolong's murmur, Mayor Wang turned around and asked Li Fei, What are you doing? Didn't you say you dug a pit and buried him alive? When did I say I buried him alive? Okay, then I'll execute him now and bury him. Bold. Who gave you the courage? Mayor Wang quickly took out his shell gun from his waist and aimed it at Li Fei's feet. This. Li Fei Jiao didn't know how Mayor Wang suddenly aimed his gun at him. End of this chapter. Chapter 9, Please Give Me a Gun. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9, Please Give Me a Gun Mayor Wang shouted, Let go of him. Let go of him. Li Feijiao didn't understand. According to legend, the undisputed Mayor Wang, how could he go back and forth today? He had just heard him say he would bury him, but now he proposed to kill him first and then bury him. Unexpectedly, the Mayor Wang immediately changed his mind and wanted to let Chen Li Song go. While he was hesitating, he suddenly heard a chorus of twenty or thirty people brought by Mayor Wang shouting, Let go of him. Li Fei's feet and the others were all startled. Looking up, the twenty or thirty long and short guns were aimed at Li Fei's feet in unison. Among those twenty or thirty people, there was also Li Fei Jiao's police colleague who aimed his gun at him. They are now only following the orders of Mayor Wang, seemingly declaring to Li Fei Jiao. Mayor Wang's authority cannot be denied. I mean, drag the body of Zhao Dezai to the back mountain and bury it. Do you understand? Mayor Wang pointed to Zhao Dezai, who had been dead for a long time and had been stiff in the mud under the rain. Chen Li Song still can't let go. Li Feijiao's stubbornness, just like Huang Daiming said he was, Li Sankai, is also famous in Daofeng town. Why can't it be released? Because he refused to pay military rations. 
Mayor Wang asked, what military provisions? A month ago, you arranged for the police team to collect food from various households for you. I arranged it. You people go door dot to dot door searching for food, so you have put the accounts on the head of the National Corps. When will our National Corps ask your police team to collect food? Our Captain Huang. Mayor Wang was furious and cursed, damn it, you guys are so lawless. How dare you use my name to plunder grain? Everyone deserves to die. Upon hearing Mayor Wang's words, Lu Guolong and Zheng Qian were so frightened that their legs softened. They immediately knelt down in front of Mayor Wang and said, Mayor Wang, this is not our business. We are all listening to Captain Huang's arrangements. I'll settle accounts with Huang Daiming when I come back. Zhao Detsai is such a damn kid. Li Feijiao, let Chen Li Song go immediately. Li Feijiao felt that the hero was not at a disadvantage and immediately let go of Chen Li Song. Mayor Wang saw that Li Feijiao had already released Chen Li Song, and then ordered the people he brought, brothers, run forward, set off. The crowd immediately withdrew their guns and quickly formed two lines, running forward. Just now, An Chang and her daughter, who were frightened by Mayor Wang's aura, began to cry again, but they were no longer wailing like before. Chen Li Song finally realized that Mayor Wang did not intend to kill him. He not only did not kill him, but also saved him. However, Chen Li Song was still curious about Mayor Wang appearing here with so many people and guns. He chased after him and asked, Mayor Wang, what are you doing here? Enemy invaders, we will go to Lushan Ridge to ambush them. Please give me a gun, I'll go too. Chen Li Song didn't know what an enemy 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 was, but suddenly felt Mayor Wang's righteousness and believed that everything he did was right. Just because of what Mayor Wang just said and what he is doing now, it must be for the country and the people. Since my life was saved by Mayor Wang just now, I should do something for him. Mayor Wang jogged and said to Chen Li Song, No, I know you. You got married a month ago, and we ambushed the enemy. We could die at any moment. You don't have any children yet. So, my brother dot in dot law has done something bad, and I have to go to the front line to fight against the enemy. Can you help me with the aftermath of those murdered villagers? Chen Li Song felt for a moment that Mayor Wang was right. Since Mayor Wang had assigned him a task, he had no reason to refuse. So he said, Yes. I promise to take care of what you have instructed. Okay. Go ahead. I didn't have the face to see them just now. Apologize to that mother and daughter for me. Yes. Chen Li Song stopped and returned to the burnt down house of Zheng Yijing. Aunt Cheng and her daughter are still crying in front of the still burning house. Although the house has collapsed, the fire has not yet burned out and it is still impossible to approach and collect the bodies of the five villagers who were killed. Li Feijiao, Lu Guolong, and Zheng Qian, who had been reprimanded by Mayor Wang, drew two unburned wooden pillars from the fire and extinguished it. They tied Zhao Datsai's body to the wooden pillar and prepared to carry them to the back mountain to dig a pit and bury them as Mayor Wang instructed. Li Fei saw Chen Li Song returning and said to Lu Guolong and Zheng Qian, You two carry this beast to the back mountain. I have something else to do. After the confession was completed, he shouted to Chen Li Song, Chen Li Song, Mayor Wang said he let you go, but Captain Huang definitely won't let you go. Are you finished? Chen Li Song listened to Mayor Wang's instructions and returned to deal with the affairs of Zheng Jiashan. Of course, there was also an important matter, which was that those two bags of millet were still thrown under someone else's roof. Now that he heard Li Fei's unreasonable words, he couldn't help but feel a nameless anger rising in his head. Li Fei Jiao had already bullied him and reached out to grab Chen Li Song, shouting, Mayor Wang is not my boss, Captain Huang is my boss. I have to listen to my boss. Refusing to pay military rations in one life, Mayor Wang said forget it, but Li Feijiao didn't say forget it. Chen Li Song quickly dodged aside, feeling helpless about Li Feijiao's madness. Yo ho, 
will you still hide from me? Li Fei reached out and didn't grab Chen Li Song. He immediately became agile and vowed to catch Chen Li Song with his own hands. He didn't believe it, with his agility and speed, how could Chen Li Song escape from his palm? However, he was blocked by someone in front of him. Li Fei's heels are facing him directly, with a pair of big eyes facing a pair of even bigger eyes. The person blocking Li Fei's feet is Lin Sankai, who just twisted Zhao Dutsai's neck. Lin Sankai said in his mouth, Chen Li Song, where did the police officer run just now? I've only fired a few bullets from the gun, but fortunately I ran fast and didn't get killed by those people wearing duckbill caps and steel helmets. Lin Sankai, why are you running back foolishly? Chen Li Song was surprised by Lin Sansai's return. In the future, I have to learn from you how to shoot. I hid by the roadside, aimed my gun at those people's heads, and didn't even know how to shoot them. They didn't die, but I almost died. I ran all the way here, thinking I had to change my name to Lin Feijiao. Li Fei seemed very excited when he saw Lin San Kai coming back and asked him, Wait a moment, you guys can talk later. I know you, Lin San Kai is you, you are Lin San Kai. Unexpectedly, he's a coward who even shows off running as a glory. Lin San Kai certainly wouldn't deny it and asked instead, Your grandfather, I won't change my name, I won't change my surname. Lin San Kai is me. Do you want to avenge that beast? Li Fei Jiao said again, I won't avenge the animals. But you just killed a police officer. Mayor Wang will let you go, and Captain Huang may also let you go, but I can never let you go. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 A Funny Martial Arts Competition You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 A Funny Martial Arts Competition, Oh! That beast is related to you. Lin Sankai quickly grabbed his gun and pressed it against Li Fei's feet. In fact, there are no bullets in his gun. He saw that Li Fei Jiao was holding a gun and not aiming at himself, but he was worried that Li Fei Jiao would shoot at any time, so he spoke while cautiously looking around, so that when Li Fei Jiao turned the muzzle of the gun, he could quickly dodge. Li Fei reached out and pressed Lin Sansai's gun barrel down, saying disdainfully, Why are you holding a broken gun without bullets? Can you shoot? You're related to that beast. So you're like him. Lin Sankai was shot by Li Fei's foot and his gun ran out of bullets, so he let it go. I'm not of the same kind as that beast. Captain Huang said, you're the third best. Your fist skills are good. I checked Zhao Dutsai's fatal injury, but it was twisted by your hands. I just want to see if your fist is strong or if my legs are strong enough. You don't need a gun. To fight with you, do we still need a gun? Li Fei confidently raised his hand and made a few clicks, withdrawing the bullets from the barrel and placing the gun by the wall. You're too arrogant. Lin Sankai, I see that you also enjoy watching dramas. Haven't you heard the lyrics sing, Art is bold, dot. Ha ha ha. You also enjoy watching movies. I don't like watching Hundred Dishes of Incense Firewood Fan, I like watching Force Up Liang Shan. Dot. Your surname is Li, no matter how hard you force yourself, you can't be considered Lin Chong. So, if you want to be Lin Chong, I'll become Lu Qian instead. Chen Li Song saw that these two people didn't seem to be fighting, but rather two brothers communicating and chatting quite in sync. Lin Sankai said, I see you're not even as good as Lu Qian. Ya ba. I, Li Feijiao, insist on catching you two back today. Li Feijiao was accused by Lin Sankai of being inferior to Lu Qian, and he had already rushed towards Lin Sankai. I only heard a shout and said, Get down. A gun pointed towards Lin Sankai and aimed at him. It turned out that when Zheng Qiyun and Lu Guolong were carrying Zhao Dutsai's body to the back mountain for burial, they found that there were no tools available. Now, when they returned, they wanted two hoes from the onlookers. They saw that Lin Sankai and Li Feijiao were about to engage in close combat, 
so Zheng Qian picked up his gun and asked Lin Sankai to squat down. But Lin Sankai quickly flashed, and the gun was already in his hands. He had seen how Li Feijiao withdrew his bullets and also learned from his appearance. With a few clicks, he withdrew the bullets from the gun barrel and threw the empty gun to Chen Li Song, saying, Then. Show me the two of them. Who dares to use the gun? I'll just twist his neck. Li Feijiao also stopped his attack and said to the two colleagues, I'm going to see the truth with Lin Sankai on my fists and feet today. You two are watching from the side and not allowed to help. Watch me beat Lin Sankai into Lin Sankai, and then bring these two back to the police force. Lu Guolong had seen Lin Sankai twist Zhao Dutsai's neck with his hand, how dare he come forward to help. Now Jing Qian has experienced the speed of Lin Sansai's movements, and has long been intimidated by Lin Sansai's aura. His gun has also been taken away, and he no longer has the ability to help. Lin Sankai smiled and said, Uh. What if you lose? Joke. Who am I? Will I lose? Li Fei adjusted his figure and prepared to pounce. When I said, Li Fei Jiao, I aim to plunder the people's food for you. I really need to teach you a lesson today. Li Fei Jiao heard Lin Sankai talk about the matter of grain, and just now he also heard Mayor Wang say that it was not the National Army's grain requisition. He felt like he was in the wrong, but he also felt that he was right because he was executing Captain Huang's order. Stop talking nonsense. You still have reason to kill someone. As soon as the words fell, Li Fei's feet rushed towards Lin Sankai, and the two of them engaged in close combat. A gunshot could be heard from afar, and Chen Li Song listened to the direction of the sound, which should be in the direction of Lushan Ridge where Mayor Wang went. Although he was not very clear about what Mayor Wang and his people were going for, the dense gunfire now made him unable to help but miss Mayor Wang and his companions. Lin Sankai, this is the sound of firecrackers delivering you to the funeral in advance. They say your fist is considered a talent, but I don't think it's too powerful, do I? Fuck your mother. I just ran back from that direction, that was gunfire. You said your name is Li Feijiao, and your legs are very strong. I don't see it either. These two people not only fought hard, but also practiced their eloquence. Although Lushan Ridge was several miles away from Daofeng town, Chen Li Song listened to the increasing gunfire coming from there. Although he knew he couldn't see it, he still occasionally looked in that direction. Li Fei and Lin Sankai fought hand to hand for a while, both panting heavily, and surprisingly, they were evenly matched. Li Fei said with his feet, it's not interesting to continue fighting like this. We punch each other, foot to foot, and hit each other hard. No one can dodge. How about that? You want to take advantage of your flying feet, kick off my leg, and then catch us back to fight, right? Li Fei Jiao smiled and said, Anyway, you can't run away. Captain Huang will patrol here right away. You accept your fate. But before we catch you too, we can still compete in martial arts. Otherwise, when Captain Huang catches you, he will definitely give you a pop shot and kill you. Who should I go practice with? Just compare. Okay, let's start with the punches. The two unexpectedly made an appointment to stop, stood in their positions face to face, squatted in a horse stance, and extended the same middle ground to compete. They began to forcefully hit each other's arms with a thump 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 thump. The sound of arm to arm collisions, compared to the gunshots coming from Lushan Ridge, seemed to make people feel even more pain as they looked at them. Not only Chen Li Song, but also Lu Guolong, Cheng Qian, and the onlookers, as well as Aunt Zhang and her daughter, all feel puzzled and hurt about their sudden transition from fighting to this ridiculous martial arts competition mode. This is not about deciding whether to catch Lin Sankai or Chen Li Song in the competition, it's clearly two little boys fighting. They fought fiercely for a while without a clear winner, and Li Feijiao and Lin Sankai almost shouted at the same time, Stop. The two of them said stop and stop, and each withdrew their arms. 
Li Fei pointed at Lin Sansai's foot and said, let's compete now. In fact, if we pull up their sleeves now, their arms will have bruised into a blue dragon long ago. Okay. How do we compare our feet? After you kick me, I kick you, and then you kick me again, I kick you again, until another person's leg is broken or kicked until they beg for mercy, then they can stop. Oh. Just kick on the other person's leg, right? Yes. Since I'm called Li Fei Jiao, I naturally have some advantage in my legs and feet. I'll let you kick the first one. Lin Sankai asked, do you really want me to kick your foot first? Li Fei Jiao seemed to have the confidence to win and smiled, if you kick first, what can you do? It's just a matter of time before I break your foot. You don't know how to dodge, do you? The one dodging is a boar without a handle. Can I take a few steps back and kick you again? I'm afraid I'll get too close to you and kick you too hard. When Lin Sankai said these words, Chen Li Song felt a bit amused, and others also wanted to laugh. Sure, Li Fei Jiao didn't know Lin Sansai's thoughts and extended his hands to protect the Dantian. Just don't kick it crooked. I will definitely not kick crooked, I will definitely only kick your foot. Lin Sankai slowly took a few steps back, ready to kick. End of this chapter.